Welcome back to Psychology of Addiction. What about um, younger clients who have like underlying mental disorders like ADHD? And I know that um, there's this huge prevalence of uh, like ADHD medications. What do you feel about that, like using uh, pharmacological solutions for our youth? Anytime you see somebody, whether they're young or old, but I think especially as they're young, what you're looking at is what's the least amount of intervention you could do for a particular problem to get the most results with the least amount of side effects or difficulty. And um, the way that I look at therapy is a lot like diamond cutting. Uh, you want to try to uh, figure out exactly what's happening and then pinpoint your intervention to make that work with the least amount of a problem. Uh, most of the time you can do that without too much problems, but sometimes there are difficulty. In other words, I know that I can't treat bipolar or schizophrenia well. Yeah. I just can't. Um, they're going to have medication. Mm -hmm. That medication is going to have some side effects, but it's a whole lot better than having the disease itself. Yeah. Um, whereas anxiety, depression, ADD, I've got a lot more choices there. What I'm looking for is a reward and problem area, and I think I'm going to explain it with ADD especially. The general thought is that with ADD, you put them on Ritalin and Adderall, and therefore you turn them into drug addicts. And that is not my experience. My experience is that 85% of people who are ADD and do not treat it become addicts. Mm -hmm. Exactly the opposite. Because what happens is they get into high school, they start experimenting with drugs, and if they find a drug that acts like a key to a lock, mm -hmm. which for people with ADD is pot, uh, nicotine, caffeine, speed, coke. Mm -hmm. Those are the biggies. Okay? And if they find them, they feel better, and by God, they want to continue to feel better, so they go ahead and do it. My personal experience with it is that my granddaughter had ADD, and she, um, and you don't get over ADD. If you have it, you've got it. And she couldn't sleep uh, until 3.30 in the morning for the first five years of her life. Wow. And if we gave her sugar, she rolled on the carpet mm -hmm. as if she was crazy. We'd call it poisoning the kid. And so what we did is we uh, worked really diligently on diet, taking all simple carbs out. There's a point right here in the back of the um, uh, uh, ankle that is an endorphin point in Chinese medicine where you can hold that and it shoots natural endorphins into your body and calms you down and allows you to sleep. So the first five years of her life, I treated her with that. I knew that her mom wasn't going to let me put her on meds. Quite frankly, I would have done it because it would have been more helpful than negative. But what I did is I started to test out as many substances that I could find and after about four years, uh, I found a homeopathic blend mm. that seemed to do uh, the job. And so I studied it for a couple of years with my adult clients who were uh, already stabilized on Adderall. Mm. And they experienced really good results. So I went over to the Amen Clinic with about seven of my clients. And we did brain scans and proved that we matched or beat the performance of Adderall with a natural substance. With depression, anxiety, ADD, most of the time you can treat that naturally. Uh, schizophrenia, bipolar, you've got to do medication. And um, I think you have to do what you have to do. But you want to be very careful not to uh, cause pain. You always want to have 10% um, or less side effects if you can do that, mm -hmm. and you want to see a tremendous improvement or you just don't go there. Well, that's all for now, but uh, join us next time and we'll be delving into more information.